Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Rufa. Good, Good morning, morning Ayo. Good morning. Yes, let's start the review with this day. Nigeria's newspaper of record. <clears throat> the lead story of Basanjo, Nigeria at Crossroads. Needs leader <clears throat> with right character. Says he's paid his dues. Yes, former President Olusegun of Basanjo was in Enugu yesterday. He has to pay tribute and condole with the family <coughs> of First Republic Minister of Aviation, Chief Mbazulike Amechi, who died on November 1. But the message he took there yesterday, talking about leader with the right character. Of course, we're in the process of recruiting another leader at the highest level as a country with the general election slated for next year. Former President Olusegun Gwambasanjo, well, he did not mention any name, but if we look at what he said, it's like he has somebody in mind. He said the major problem with Nigeria was the death of leaders with the right type of character. We should be trusted with the leadership role. Now, he went further to say, so if I put my hand on someone, it means that comparing with the other is a merit that will be of benefit to Nigeria, he said. But there was also somebody there, Chief, Pa Ayo Adibanjo was also in Enugu to also, uh, to also condole with the people. And former President Olusha Gombasanjo went forward to say, and I believe that Chief Adibanjo stands for the same thing. What I believe and what I think Pa Adibanjo believes is not ethnic, it's not sectional. It's not religious. It is Nigerian, I believe, in one Nigeria. Yes. If you want to decode or unpack, as Ruben will put it, <laughs> what a former president is saying. Yes, we know he had two visitors recently. Presidential candidates. Peter Obi visited him. Ashwaju Bolamet also visited him. Uh, of course, there was no news about whether he endorsed somebody or he preferred one. But here he's saying, if I put my hand on someone, it means that comparing with the other, there is a merit that will benefit, that will be of benefit to Nigeria. Now, Peter Obi was also in Enugu yesterday at the same time. Is he endorsing Peter Obi? Because we know what Pa Adibanjo stands for when it comes to the candidates. He has come out clearly to say his group, that is the Pan Yoruba uh, Social Cultural Organization, Afenifere, is backing Peter Obi. And he gave reasons for equity, for justice. And he believes Peter Obi can be trusted. He has character. So is Obasanjo now aligning with the Afenifere position? Because these are his words, and I think they are clear enough. You don't even need to unpack to know where Chief or Obasanjo is pointing at. But we just look at other newspapers and the stories they have. Yes, if we look at the Punch newspaper, the Punch newspaper, uh, yes, let's just... Yes, we have the Punch newspaper. The INEC PDP office is raised, scores killed in Southeast Kaduna. Yet another attack on INEC facilities. This time, the police were able to repair, even though some uh, fire, petrol bomb mm. were thrown at the buildings, but not uh, much of sensitive materials were destroyed, but the police killed three of these assailants 
and two were arrested. I'm interested in those two that have been arrested because we need to get to the root of this matter. Who is behind these attacks? Who are, who are the ones sponsoring these guys? Are they just going on rampage on their own? I think the police need to get to the root of this matter because one attack too many. And if this continue, of course, it will affect the preparations of the Independent National Electoral Commission. So many Nigerians, most Nigerians will be waiting to hear from the police what they will be able to extract from those um, assailants they arrested early morning yesterday. Now, the Vanguard newspaper has the story. Politicians inducing voters with money, buying PVCs. This is INEC making this allegation. A worrisome development, PDP is saying those who weaponize poverty behind purchase of PVCs, Labour Party. Politicians creating problems for electoral system. A fenifera, INEC must invalidate. Invalidate, stolen, bought PVCs. Pandev, INEC left openings for manipulation. Ohanese is accusing. Now, if some persons are buying PVCs and INEC is aware of this, they should be reported to the security agencies so that such persons should be arrested and, of course, missed made to face the music. It's not enough to just go to the rooftop and cry and make allegations. If there are concrete evidence, persons must be arrested and made to face the music. Otherwise, this will continue. Some politicians are ready to do anything to distort the system, to pervert free, fair, and credible election. But this must not be allowed to happen. And as we head to the 2023 election. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, despite DSS ultimatum, petrol scarcity persists in states. Product sells for 310 naira per liter in Kaduna, Kanu, others. Queues is in Lagos, Abuja. Marketers seek price control Deregulation, DSS begins secret operations. Well, it's not enough to just read the riot act. As we said on this program some days ago, if the products are not available. Of course, marketers will know what to do. And this is what we are saying, 310. But people are buying because it's either you buy or you don't drive your car. Either you buy or you don't power your generator. People are buying. What does that tell us? Perhaps it is time to remove subsidy. Deregulate the market. Let importers, marketers bring in their products, sell at the cost uh, effective price, and Nigerians will buy as they're buying at 310 Naira per liter in many parts of the country, according to that report. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper, COVID-19 guidelines, presidential uh, uh, committee abol abolishes face mask rule at airports, cancels coronavirus PCR rule irrespective of vaccination status, orders airlines to resume in-flight meals services you'll tide. Immigration to establish diaspora desk at international airports. IATA becomes Africa's 1.9% passenger. Cargo traffic despite over 1 billion population. Bemont, yes. IATA bemont's 1.9% passengers. Uh, cargo traffic around the world. That's what Africa uh, is contributing, despite the one billion uh, population of Africa. But does this mean, now, COVID-19 guidelines off. Kawena say, COVID-19 over in Nigeria. Because with these um, 
new guidelines, it means you don't even have to take the vaccine. But Nigerians should also be warned that in other countries, they still ask. If you are traveling out of the country, they still ask for your vaccination status. So this may not just be the end because the vaccines are still available and it is advisable for people to, who have not taken to go and do so. Now, if we look at the foreign newspapers quickly, the foreign newspapers, the Times of London, last minute talks to halt strike breakdown. Thousands of patients face cancellations. The health secretary, Steve Bakley, of course yesterday, told the unions that government will not reopen pay negotiations. And of course, Pat Cullen, uh, the general secretary of the Royal College of Nursing accused him of belligerence. But what that means is that there's a statement, and for the first time, there will be a nationwide strike by nurses. The implication for patients is that thousands of patients will be told today that operations and appointments are to be canceled. Not good news coming from the health sector in the UK. But palliatives being made, the Daily Telegraph reporting taxis may be used as ambulances in strike. Well, <coughs> that's the situation in the UK well, right I, now. I'm another friend. Two quick things. Yeah. First, on the Obasanjo story, President Obasanjo was in Enugu uh, to pay tribute uh, to former Minister of uh, Aviation. Uh, statesman who died, uh, you know, uh, and he was there. The last of the titans. Yes. As he's been Chief referred Bazuluke, uh, Amici, who died on November 1. And when he was signing the condolence register, he also made a number of statements. He was accompanied by Mr. Pitobi and also by Chief Ayo Adebanjo. And he made a point there about equity, justice, peace, and all of that. So <clears throat> the indication, I think, is very clear. He was, again on that occasion, endorsing the concept of Igbo presidency and perhaps also directly endorsing Mr. Peter B., even if he didn't say so in uh, uh, you know, explicit terms. But you know, elders sometimes speak in their proverbs and true signals. But it was very clear, even to the blind and the deaf, uh, that that was a kind of uh, endorsement. But that's that about that. The points he made, the principled points about equity and justice, I think that these are very important points uh, that everybody should pay attention to. The second point is the uh, Presidential Steering Committee and the NCAA, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, now saying that there's a new regime with regard to COVID uh, in Nigeria. Well, first, let's commend the Presidential Steering Committee I think they did a good job, you know, while, you know, COVID raged uh, heavily in Nigeria. They were there, you know. It was only the Presidential Steering Committee and the Lagos State government that all of us heard from regularly. And then, of course, you know, the uh, agency, uh, you know, in charge, uh, the federal agency, you know, leading us. However, the directives that have been given I hope they will communicate all of that down the line. That now, when we uh, board the uh, airplanes, we should be given uh, refreshment. <laughs> not that it's when we are leaving. They will give some people, they will not give other people. Part of the directive is that now, that our jollof rice, we should, not, we should not be de denied. That is a matter Two. of the economy, Ruben. No, it's not economy. It has nothing to do with They were playing it. smart with it. One, one of them have started. Have started <laughs> yeah, it okay. Seemed, I traveled recently. Secondly, <laughs> that you know, before you board your aircraft, you don't need to subject yourself to some of those uh, checks. However, what is important is that there are other public health challenges that the Nigerian government will need to play, pay attention to. COVID drew attention away from other major issues, you know, uh, affecting us. So public health is not something you do on an episodic basis. There are still other issues like meningitis, like communicable diseases that we have to worry about. But we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Efeni.